And for this topic, I have my next expert on the show. He's a member of Soul Power's electric motor department, Mr. Joe Lin. Joe, how are you today? I'm fine. So we can just use English, right? Yeah, I will try my best. I think you'll do a great job. So why don't you just introduce yourself real quick to the audience out there? Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe. I'm the manager of the electric motor department at Soul Power. I've been working in motor design and validation for more than 10 years, especially in high efficiency, PM motor and induction motors. Okay, excellent. Welcome to the show, Joe. So in the beginning, we heard from Mr. Pong that Soul Power started out as a motor component supplier and then over the years transitioned into manufacturing complete motors and uh, other motor-related products such as motorized spindles, right? Yeah, right. Um, after the last five years, Soul Power has expanded its R&D resources and manufactured techniques into a motorized spindle by integrating the high reliability motor elements inside, including the electric uh, PM motor and induction motors. Okay, and these uh, new motor technologies enable yes. Soul Power to manufacture these high precision, high speed built-in or motorized spindles, you can call it either way. So what can you tell us, maybe you can give us a crash course on the electromagnetic characteristics of motorized spindles. What are the basics? Okay, uh, first of all, if you need to get the best performance out of a motorized spindle, you need to apply numerical simulations. Uh, let me talk about some basics. Sure. A motorized spindle is a mechanical spindle with uh, motor elements embedded inside. These elements uh, are composed of a stator uh, with a, a coil winding mm -hmm. here and a rotor with conductors. Wow. Okay. And the rotor conductors can be made by uh, copper, aluminum or magnets. Okay, so you can use different <laughs> types of uh, materials. Yes, right. Okay. And the uh, winding type of the stator mm -hmm. should be three-phase. Okay, I and see. And they can only be powered by AC inverters. You mentioned we have a stator and a yes. rotor and from my understanding yeah. how it works is you have the stator with the coil right. and this creates an electric current oh, right. and this current causes the rotor to rotate, right? That's why it's called a rotor, is that uh, correct? Uh, that's basically right. A spindle operates throughout the interaction between the stator and the rotor by the magnetic field and electric current inside the coil. So the cutting performance is uh, heavily influenced by the mechanical characteristics inside the motor elements. Okay, so you mentioned how important it is, so I would guess that the optimization and validation of these uh, parameters is also very important. So how do you make sure that your uh, spindles or your motors within the spindle meet those requirements? Okay, uh, in the design stage, uh, we apply the numerical simulations to get the um, optimized parameters such like the uh, magnetic field and the back electric motive force overload capacity and torque constant to make sure that uh, we have a uh, uh, best design. So we need to modify the stator shape slots and the rotor uh, pole pairs, also the winding conditions. Okay, I see. So a whole bunch of simulation and testing tools during the design stage for the static, uh, for the stator and the rotor performance alone. Now, what about when we move on to uh, the actual manufacturing and the assembly of your spindles? What can you tell us about that? Uh, okay, we make all the parts, uh, motor parts, in house. Okay, everything yeah. is made in house. Every component, right? right okay, made in house because uh, we need to make sure that we have a total control of each manufacturing step. And then top quality as well, right? Yeah, right. Uh, product quality is uh, very important, mm -hmm. it's everything. We mm -hmm. believe this is the only way to make your spindle to be uh, cost effective. Uh, so after the numerical simulations that we just mentioned, mm -hmm. we can uh, get an uh, optimized uh, stator and rotor. So uh, next step, we can uh, start in the stator domination stamping tool. Okay, stamping tooling, that's the keyword, right? What uh, exactly right. Okay, does um, that mean? The stamping tool is uh, composed of four to five pieces of specific steel blocks. 
by the breeding and the cutting. And after the tooling is finished, we can start the puncturing process. Uh, during this process, each stacking uh, stacked automatically and uh, concentratedly. Okay, okay, and I see. we will use the 2D measuring uh, equipment to make sure that each stacking are uh, within uh, the total height of uh, each stocking are uh, within a tolerance of uh, plus minus 0.35 millimeters. 0.35 millimeters? Yeah. It's very precise. Uh, yeah, that's right. We uh, have a very high quality control of uh, each manufacturing process. Okay, I'm sure people out there are very happy to hear that uh, you really, really care about every single step of the manufacturing process. Accuracy everywhere at every single step. That's yeah, good. Right. So now I think uh, we want to talk about the winding because the winding of the stator is considered the heart of the electric motor, so I've been told. So I'm sure it needs a special consideration, right? All right. In the winding stage, uh, we bring the winding design from uh, numerical into practice. The key point here is the tension. Yeah, is the tension control. That's right. Uh, during winding, every turn on each coil. Uh, should be uniform mm -hmm. to make sure that they have the same electric resistance okay. in the tolerance of uh, plus minus one percent. Plus minus one percent tolerance only for the electrical resistance, right? Yeah, for the so, so electrical resistance. You don't resistance. have a lot of, lot of room for error there, so <coughs> how, do you, how do you make sure that you meet this, this, this target? Okay, uh, we make our own winding machines and oh, okay. judge and optimize the winding conditions to make sure that they stay the uniform. Mm -hmm. um, That's winding. excellent. Okay, so yeah, what happens right. after the winding process? Okay, uh, after the winding process, mm -hmm. uh, every turn are well winding, then we put them into the stator slots, then finish the post-processing. Okay, so the stator inspection is the last stage of mm -hmm. the manufacturing step, mm -hmm. including the electric uh, resistance and inductance test, AC and DC insulation test. So uh, here we can see the numerical uh, simulations and the manufacturing process in the technical point of view. Mm -hmm. So what follows is the experimental measurement by the dynamometer. Okay. Yeah, a dynamometer is a motor test equipment containing a lower motor, mm -hmm. a power meter, and mm -hmm. a torque sensor. Okay. It can provide a constant load to the test motor and test the motor's speed and torque performances to get all the designed parameters mm -hmm. into practice. Okay, so then you have the transition from theory, whatever you plan, and then you have the actual product. Yeah, right. Okay, right. excellent, Joe. There was a lot of valuable information. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys out there, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few seconds answering the most important questions about salt power in general and of course about their motorized spindles.